and I put my eulogy um, in my dad's speech box that I found in Tallahassee as we were clearing out. Governor D. Robert Graham, good luck. <laughs> Hello, my name is Arva Suzanne Graham Gibson, and I'm daughter number three. Thank you for joining us today or watching via live stream to honor our father. Once upon a time, there was a rural and rustic farm on the edge of the Everglades, which we tried to emulate today with the flowers, <laughs> not far from where we sit today. Living at Pensuco Farm, later called Graham Dairy, was dad's father, Ernest Graham, also known as Cap, his wife, Florence, who passed away at an early age, and their three children, Mary, Bill, and Bill. What followed were a series of serendipitous but deeply fortunate events, all happening in my dad's beloved Florida. After Florence passed, Cap Graham met his future bride, Hilda Simmons, a school teacher, on the Pensacola and Atlanta Railroad passenger train. Hilda boarded at her hometown of Defuniac Springs, and Cap boarded in Tallahassee, heading to Jacksonville to connect to take another train back to Miami. Hilda clearly caught Cap's eye, and after a brief courtship, they married, with Hilda joining Cap in what could only be described as the southern frontier on the edge of the Everglades. The plan was they were not going to have any more children. However, happily for all of us, in November of 1936, a honeymoon baby, Daniel Robert Graham, was born. More, more chance encounters ensued in the creation of the Graham family lore. My mom's parents met in the early 1930s on the steps of the historic courthouse in downtown Miami. My grandfather's name was Gabriel Corey, who immigrated from Beirut, Lebanon, and worked at the Prudential Insurance Company. My grandmother was Mildred Moore from Ridgeville, Ohio, working as a legal secretary for Judge Jefferson B. Brown, at that time, a circuit judge from, for Dade and Monroe counties. Now, like my dad and my namesake, Arva, if you know me, you know I cannot resist the opportunity to share a Florida historical fact. <laughs> Mildred's boss, Judge Brown, was previously Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court in 1917 and also the chair of the Florida Railroad Commission, where he brokered the deal with Henry Flagler to extend the railroad to his hometown of Key West. And the court complex in Key West is named after Judge Brown. As the story goes, Gabriel first saw Mildred gliding down the long, beautiful stairs at the historic courthouse, courthouse wearing a red cape that she had sewn for herself. Gabe pursued Mildred for six years, they married in 1934, and happily for all of us, had a child, Adele Corey, who was and remains completely adored. Now fast forward to Gainesville, 1957, and another chance meeting. Adele Corey was walking out of the administration's building at the University of Florida, go Gators, <laughs> where she was seeking a tutor for a science class. Bob recognized the elegant and beautiful Adele from Miami, approached her and said, Adele, you don't need to hire a tutor. I'll be your tutor. <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is history. Mom, we all want to thank you for needing that tutor at the University of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> that happy encounter led to 65 years of love and devotion to each other family, state, and country. And if I dare say, the most iconic and gracious First Lady of Florida has ever known. Let's clap it up. <laughs> your high touch with thousands of your beautifully handwritten notes as evidence, together with your dedication and advocacy for our father throughout including his health-challenged years, is a true reflection of your magical life together. Like you, or excuse me, like Dad, you are an incredible role model.
Two weeks ago, lying in the state of Florida in the old capital, Dad received a richly deserved honor. From start to finish, it was majestic and historic, something I don't think anyone who was in attendance will ever forget. In accompanying my mom back to Gainesville, we discovered from our police escort, Captain Ryan Martina, that all of the branches of the police and military were actually vying to be a part of paying their respects to Bob Graham. Captain Martina told us that while Dad was on his final ride back to Tallahassee after he passed, in a motorcade, it was fit for a president. Troopers had assembled at every county line along the route, stand at attention, and saluted as the motorcade passed. In, in lives defined by chance encounters, or if you prefer, destiny, I had a magical experience that very next day. True story. At their Oak Hammocks residence in Gainesville, I was walking a wooden trail inside the gates, just trying to clear my head. I sensed a presence just feet away from me and I realized it was a bobcat. I've checked, no one has ever seen a bobcat anywhere near this trail. Now for those who don't know, the mascot at the Miami Lakes School named after my dad, the Bob Graham Education Center is the bobcat. I stopped in my tracks, but I, I wasn't scared. Quite the opposite. A happy calm came over me as I just knew it was Dad. The first thought that came to me was that Dad was saying thank you. Not just to me, but to all his family, his friends, and all Floridians for a life so very well lived. Our family wants to recognize and deeply thank everyone for the outpouring of support that has allowed our spirits to soar. Personally, I just can't help think, and in very important ways, the real Florida, the real Florida has shown up over these past few weeks. I know I speak for Gwen, Sissy, and Kendall in saying we have never been more proud to be of our Florida heritage, our Miami heritage, to be from Miami Lakes and a part of the Graham family, and most of all, to be Bob and Adele Graham's daughters. I hope that following this service, you will join us at the hotel on Main Street, where we look forward to many of you reuniting from governor, senator days, and hey, even if you're a good old Miami Laker. We want it to be a happy reunion for you all. And my mom wants to remind you that the University of Florida, through its oral history project, will be at the reception preparing, prepared to record your memories and stories about dad. Speaking of the Bob Graham Alumni Staff Network, which is huge, Dad's staff used to laugh about having to reserve five tickets from D.C. to Miami at every time Dad needed to come home. Why? Because not only did my dad refuse to not miss a Senate vote, but as we all know, Dad would be walking along the way to the gate, see someone and say, hello, what is your name? followed by a battery of questions. And then, as we all know, he would pull out his notepad and write down their information and then ask them to repeat, <laughs> double checking to ensure that he had their name and address correct. And of course, days later, they would receive a follow-up letter, some of which have been framed and shared with us over the past weeks. One of my favorite Maya Angelou quotes is, People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. This is utterly true of Bob Graham. And our family has heard so many wonderful stories recently of Dad's interaction and impact on others' lives. I promise you our family will never tire of hearing your stories. In closing, I recently read a story about dad bringing differing parties to the table in the name of Everglades restoration. Friends of Everglades founder Marjorie Stoneman Douglas was always pushing Bob Graham to do better. And dad respected her for that. Dad said of her, and I quote, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas deals in very tangible, 
action sorry deals in very tangible action whether environmental scientific or political but she also understands that there has to be a sense of magic that people have to be inspired by what is bigger than themselves longer than their lifetime this i believe is the essence of bob graham a role model for his descendants the state of florida and our country you can't go anywhere in florida without finding something that dad impacted or preserved for generations to come someone wrote in the comments section of the new york times the sun feels a bit less bright now that bob graham has passed i refuse to believe that that is true if we live and lead like Bob Graham, the Florida sunshine will glow brighter than ever. I, my hope is that we all have caught some of his light, like how dad and our beloved Uncle Bill would catch fireflies as kids on the edge of the Everglades, or how famed Florida artist Beanie Backus taught the highwaymen how to capture that magical light when painting the clouds floating over the iconic Florida landscapes. When you're lucky enough to catch one of these striking sunsets with the sky full with almost impossible colors, I hope you might think that's our Bob Graham looking over our state and all of its people. Please remember dad in those moments, but most importantly, please remember how Bob made you feel. You will be missed dad I hope you're enjoying magical sunrises and majestic sunsets up there, singing your favorite tunes with Jimmy Buffett. You've earned that. We love you. Thank you.